So tonight we're having corn chowder for SpongeBob's birthday. So we're having corn chowder. So I'm gonna make um, bread. I was gonna make rolls, and then I, I was trying to find my 30 minute roll dough, and I couldn't find it. Ran across my French bread dough recipe instead. Uh, and you do need a recipe when you're doing bread, unless you're a baker who bakes every day in the bakery. You need your recipe. So I pulled out my French bread recipe. So I was going to make rolls. I make all kinds of things with my French bread recipe. Um, I don't make baguettes. That's not a thing I make. That, I mean, I could, but that, for me, that'd be weird. Um, so when I, I thought that, and then I thought, but I love to braid my French bread. And you guys might not have seen how to make fr fr braided French bread before. So I'm going to make braided French bread to go with our SpongeBob soup. Okay, so first thing you want to do is take off your ring because just like with meat, ew, that stuff gets stuck under there. Okay, so I just want to make one smaller loaf so I cut my recipe in half. So we're going to start out with three cups of flour and in case you don't know or remember, you can use the back of a knife, not, not the front of the knife because it's scooped, it'll take food out of your bowl. You want it upside down where it's flat and just wipe it across. So one, it calls for, for a half a recipe, it's three and a half cup, but you don't want to start with all of it because you might not need as much. It might be too dry. It's harder to add water than it is to add flour. So we definitely want to start with less. So we're going to go with three and I put it in a giant bowl for two reasons. One, so you can see it better. And two, we're going to proof this in our quick cooker for the first time because with bread, you proof it twice. You proof it as a ball and then you shape it into whatever form you want, like the braided, the baguettes, uh, clovers in a muffin tin, or um, just regular rolls. Uh, and it's that time you actually put it on the item you're going to cook in. So we can't put a braid inside of our proofing quick cooker. So that's three cups of flour. And to do that, I will show you how to proof it in with this bowl, actually. Proof it in the same bowl you mixed it in. Because then you're soaking a bowl to make it easier to wash at the same time as proofing your bread. So if you don't have uh, anything to proof bread with, like we do with the quick cooker, uh, you can just proof the same way twice with the bowl. So when I show you that with the braid, you can do that when you do the ball as well. You'll just need a second bowl that's larger or get a smaller one for the water part to set it in. It's like a double boiler only with flour. Okay, oh, we need to leave that up in here. Hello. And I always leave a one cup measuring cup in my flour just because that's what you use the most often with using flour. And I cook a lot, so. So we want half a cup of sugar. So the yeast actually eats the sugar. The yeast is alive. When you warm it up, the yeast is alive, and that's what it eats. It eats sugar. So the more sugar you have, that doesn't mean put four cups of sugar in here. But if you put a little extra sugar, it'll grow a little bit bigger. So the more sugar you put, the bigger it will get to an extent. So we want half a cup of sugar. And we won't need that again, so we put that away. And then we want one teaspoon of salt. There you go, one teaspoon of salt. Then we want two and a half tablespoons of yeast go in the water. Okay, so we're done with our dry ingredients here. We'll just give this a quick stir. We're going to use our hands anyway. So, ooh, don't throw it out the bowl. Yeah, that's why I stuck my apron on for sure. Because every time I bake, I make that problem. Okay, so we're going to make a little well here. And mostly you do that with pasta, but since I'm going to make it by hand, I'm going to make a well here as well. Okay, so we have a cup of water here. I heat it up in the microwave. You don't want it overly hot or it will kill your yeast, but you want it warm, a little bit warmer than you would make a baby's bottle. If you've ever made a baby's bottle or it's just, you just drip it on your wrist here. It's the most sensitive area. So you want it to feel warm and maybe slightly stink, but no more than that, or otherwise you're not going to wake up your yeast, you're going to kill it. 
So your yeast, I buy in giant containers. You can buy in the little packets and do packets at a time. But I buy in the big containers because, well, bake a lot. So um, I keep this in my freezer or my fridge. Either one will keep it fresher and longer. So we're going to use two and a half tablespoons. Oh, wait a second. Oh, that goes in our dry dirt. I'm doing a different recipe. Different breads call for um, call for the yeast to go into different parts. There we go. There's half. Um, anyway, so this one actually calls for it to go in the dry. So it'll warm up when the water and oil hit it. That's right. The oil goes in the water. It's been a while since I've used my French bread recipe. Because um, I've been using that 30 minute roll dough a lot. Because... Well, it gets done in 30 minutes, and this takes like two hours. Because it takes time to proof bread, and you're proofing it twice, so it takes time. It's not a lot of work, just a lot of time. So we're going to mix that in, and then we're going to make her well again. Okay. So we have our warm water, and then what we put in our warm water is two tablespoons of oil. I'm going to use um, extra virgin olive oil. But you can use vegetable oil just fine. So, two tablespoons. There we are. Two tablespoons of oil. All right, get that up out of our way. Get those out of our way because we're going to use our countertop here in a minute. there okay then I'm gonna put our oil water mixture in the middle and yes I could have poured my water in and then just put the oil on top but as soon as that warm water hits the yeast it starts activating so you want to start turn you want to start putting it in there okay so you just start incorporating it and you want it to be a ball that you can put on the counter and mixed together so it's wet there so now we're gonna start going off to the side and incorporating the rest of that flour in there now I use this roll this uh, fridge bread for a whole lot of different things I also use it to make my cinnamon rolls so you just after it proofs the first time the second time you roll it out you pop it uh, your melted butter on it then your cinnamon sugar, sometimes I use brown sugar, and your nuts if you want, and whatever you want. So like if you you can do um, cream cheese and do a fruit, um, like a raspberry or an orange, I'm trying to think while I'm turning this thing. Okay, so now my rolled dough is like this, and so I want to add a little bit because we don't want it to be very sticky. So we're going to add some more flour, and when it proofs, it's going to go up and it's going to have more stickiness. So I usually put it on the top, and then I push it down a little bit, and then I flip it, okay? So I'm going to hold this up while it's easy to do and show you. So how you knead your bread, we don't knead like a cat. We, we put it up under, and we fold it down and push it down, okay? Then you turn it, fold it up under. Push it down. Fold it up under. Push it down. It's really hard to do up there. But when it gets to this point, do it a little bit more. And then we're going to transfer to our countertop. Because it's a lot easier to do that on the countertop. If you want less mess, you can keep it in the bowl. So we're just going to spread out our flour a little bit. Okay, so now you should be able to see me knead really well. So sticky fingers. I want all that bread down in there, so we're going to take that off my fingers. Okay, stick that in there. Okay, so the palm of your hand goes up under, fold it over, and down in. And you want to knead your dough until it gets really hard to knead. You can't over knead your dough. The more you knead your dough, the better it is. Okay? Well, I'm sure at some point you can over knead your dough, but... I guarantee you I'm not strong enough to have that ever happen to me. And no, it's if you've never really done it before, you're not going to be quite that fast at it. 
I just have done it for many, 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 many years. Um, a girl named Alexis actually taught me up at the children's ranch how to make bread. She's the one that taught me how to make bread. She's also the one that taught me about the yeast eating sugar and how to braid French bread. So I also use this. This also can be used as a pizza dough, although pizza doughs tend to be more yeasty. So they just have more yeast in them and a bit of a different texture. So unless you're in a bind and can't find your pizza dough recipe, you can use this or that. I prefer a pizza dough recipe, but you can if you're in a bind. Anyway, um, also another thing I love to make with this is croissants, actually. I do have a croissant dough recipe. It is an amazing recipe. It makes very flaky, buttery croissants. So, it's good, but I don't have a whole lot of patience. It takes patience to use a dough like that. So, unlike this dough, and most doughs, your croissant dough, as you're trying to roll it out with your rolling pin, it snaps back. It snaps back almost the same amount you rolled it out. So it takes a lot of time, and I don't have that kind of patience. I want it done. I want to be doing something and get it done and not roll it out. So this is why I usually use my French bread as my croissants. Then I just roll it out round and then cut my little triangles. Still makes really good croissants. Sometimes I'll still use my croissant dough if I want to make sure that it is exactly like croissants. All right, we got that pretty good. Now, if you don't have an apparatus that does your proofing for you, let me make sure it doesn't get sticky in there too much. It will a little bit. Okay, we're just gonna roll in a dough. If you don't have one of those, that's okay. You can put it back in here, or not in here, uh, put it in the clean one, and you oil it, you pop it in there, you oil the top, put plastic wrap over, or clean tea towel, which is a hand towel, um, and just let it rise for about an hour. Um, no matter how long you do it for, we're looking for double its size. So we're going to look for it to go from this to this. So it needs to double its size here. And then we'll know it's done. Now, if you over... Right, ray over raise your dough, you do end up with oh, what's it called? Oh, sourdough ends up tasting like a sourdough. How do I know? Because I accidentally did that one time at the ranch where we went, I think we went down to the store and went shopping. I say store, but the store was on the ranch. Um, the house moms left the ranch to go big grocery shopping. They'd go, I don't know where they would go, like Costco and stuff, and they would buy and Mass amounts of bulk, not what we think is bulk, but mass amounts of bulk. And then they'd come back and we had our own little store on the ranch. And then houses were allowed to get so much of so many different things. So like the government's doing now. Not really the government, the stores are doing now with like toilet paper and stuff. You can only have this many. That's what they did at the ranch. So that's kind of funny. Anyway, so we're going to stick our little roll dough in here. And she purry. So we'll just stick her down in there in the middle. I'll have to go back over because she slid because I did that. I'm going to pop it on. I have no idea how long this thing says. I also did it in half as well because a full size dough roll won't fit in here. So we're going to proof our dough in here and then we're going to cook our corn chowder in a layer. So how convenient is that? Okay, so I'm going to put this back on a stove since you saw that. Um, then we're going to roll over to proof. It says 30 minutes. That's half of an hour, so I'm saving 30 minutes by proofing it in here. Cool. So we're just going to turn that on. We'll see how she proofs. If not, it's not really a big deal. I can put it in water. Not in water. Don't put your dough in the water. That's not what I meant by in water. So what we do is we put as hot as we can get water. Don't boil it on the stove. I mean, hot as you can get out of your faucet in here. And then we float another bowl on top of that with your dough in it. And it will rise. 
the second time you shape it, obviously. So I'm going to shape it and put it on a, on a sheet pan. I'm going to put it on my pam Pamper Chef sheet pan. Love that thing because it doesn't warp. I've already made rolls on it. So I And I've also made chocolate chip cookies on it so far. So I know it doesn't warp. It's solid. And when I got it on uh, my unboxing video, I was banging on it. I was like, listen to this. It's solid. It won't warp. And it's true. It won't warp. But anyway, so when we go to do that, we'll put as hot a water from our faucet in here. And then we will just lay our cookie sheet right on top. I keep calling it a cookie sheet. They call it, um, what did I just say they called it? A sheet pan. That's what it is. Uh, they call it a sheet pan. I call it a cookie sheet. Technically, it's not a cookie sheet because it has lips. Um, I like sides. I don't like the cookie sheets that don't have sides, so I call it all cookie sheets. So, anyway, so we can put it on here. We'll, again, spray the top of the bread, in this case our braided bread, and then we'll cover it. I will probably cover it with paper towels. So you can use plastic wrap paper towels or a hand towel, a clean hand towel. So if you do... Plastic wrap, definitely spray it. Paper towels don't really need to be sprayed. And a, t a hand towel doesn't really need to be sprayed for. But you do have to spray the inside of the bowl if you're proofing in it. Because as it rises, it does get sticky. Um, as it rises the second time as your shape piece, it doesn't get sticky. Plus it cooks in the pan that you put it in anyway. So we'll show you that later. Now I'm actually going to leave my counter dirty here. Because we're going to actually put more flour down to make our braided bread. So, I will clean up the rest of it, but I will leave this mess here, and I will see you back in a little bit and show you how well it proofed, because I've never proofed in it before, so, first time. Alright, so, our proofing is done. I'm going to say that was not half. It's barely warm on the bottom. And there's some water in there. So, yeah, you should be able to put your fingers in and it bounce back if it's done. That means this isn't even remotely done. So, I'm going to do it the other way. I'm just going to grab another bowl. I might have filled that one. We've got one sitting on the side here waiting. I might have filled it too full for something like that though. Okay, so that means we need to spray this. Well, that's... I was really excited about proofing in that thing. Oh well. You could probably proof like a 30 minute roll dough, but not my French bread. Okay, I'll let the pressure add back out, pop that back on. So we're going to take our dough here. It's only slightly warm, so let's hope it didn't feel the yeast doing that. And then we're just going to use, we already put the hottest water from our soap faucet we could in here and you just slowly put it in because it will float around in here but you don't want it to dump water all over your board or your countertop here then we're just going to take this and we're going to go ahead and cover it so it can capture the heat and i'm going to see what it looks like after 30 minutes but we might have to prove it for the full hour anyway so live and learn this is what we're doing here. Live. Well, not live because I'm recording it, but my mistakes I'm keeping. Because, you know, perfectly imperfect. So while we are waiting for our dough to hopefully proof over here, it seemed a little cold, so it might not actually work, but it'll still cook up. It just won't be as light and fluffy as it should be, so it's still edible, still yummy, just not as light and fluffy. So if that doesn't rise like it should, then that's what will happen. But it's still edible. So we're not going to toss it out. We're going to keep our food. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and make our corn chowder in our quick cooker here. And we are going to do a Mexican version of it because I hear corn goes Mexican in my head. So 
that's what we're gonna do. I love Mexican food, so we're just gonna Americanize it over here. So we're going to first put it on to sear, and we're gonna add some thyme so that we don't run out, because we can always cancel it. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and hit start so it'll start warming up. And we are going to put oil in first, obviously. I'm trying to look through everything I wrote down so I don't forget anything. So we need a tablespoon of our oil here. Again, you can use vegetable oil. I just happen to be using extra virgin olive oil. So we're going to put that in here and this is what we're going to fry stuff in. Let it drip, 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 drip. I like my sound effects with these. I hope so, because otherwise it's going to probably annoy you. But the good part of this is if I am annoying you, you're probably not watching. So I'm good with it. All right, so that is heating up. We're going to, since we're not using this area right now, I'm going to go ahead and put my ingredients over here when I'm done with them so that I have space because I kind of filled it up over here. Okay, so that's heating up, and the first thing we're going to sear in here is our onion. So we cut up a medium white onion. We're just going to stick that in there. I'm going to give it a little stir. So we get all the oil on it. And again, with the layering of the seasonings, my, sorry, my corn, or my corn, my corn is over there. My pepper was a little too far away from me. Remove some stuff around. If I can put my pepper down. We're going to season our onions with some salt and pepper. We are layering flavors. And just simply using salt and pepper to do your layering of flavors will give you really good depth of flavor. You don't need like 50 gazillion spices. Although if you were ever to look into my pantries, which I have two of them, because I had my husband turn the coat closet into another pantry, because I needed more. Anyway, so you will see that I have a ton of seasoning. But that's also because I cook a lot of different things. So I have seasoning for all kinds of different cooking. So we're just going to let that cook for a minute. And then we're going to add our bell peppers in. But we're going Mexican with this, so we're not doing bell peppers. Although bell peppers aren't necessarily not Mexican food. We're doing poblanos because I love poblanos. So we're doing poblanos. We're, we cut up two poblanos and one jalapeno because I don't want to like overkill on my kids here with heat. They don't really like heat so much. I don't know. I grew up eating um, not Tabasco sauce. Um, Tabasco sauce is a vinegar base. I don't really care for vinegar based hot sauces very much. No, um, tapatio. That's what I grew up on. I grew up putting that on chips and eating it. So and that's how my dad ate it. I don't know if he eats it like that anymore. He got a little bit old, so he might not be able to digest that stuff anymore. Because as we get older, we can't digest things like we did when we were younger. So I've never, I haven't asked him if he still eats like that. I haven't seen him eat like that. I'm guessing no. So we're gonna put in our poblanos and our jalapenos. So our poblanos we cut up a little bit bigger, and our jalapenos, of course, we cut up very, very small. We don't want anybody to get a chunk of jalapeno in their mouth. That would be funny if it happened to my husband. Not so much my kids. That would make me sad. Don't you just love that difference? Hurt my husband a little bit. Makes me laugh. My kids. Makes me cry. Except maybe currently my teenage son. He's very obnoxious right now. They're no joke with the teenage years being obnoxious. Holy crap, man. But lucky me, he likes to stay in his room a lot, so... He annoys me and then runs away. And if he was down here right now and heard me say that, he'd be standing across the room. <laughs> he makes this weird face. I can't even make his face because that wasn't that face. It's, it's uh, partially annoyed and partially, you're so weird. 
Isn't that funny? I think it's funny. I do so amuse myself sometimes. So we're just cooking that down. Bum, 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 bum. You need to cook it down most of the way because the next thing that's going in is some garlic. But again, you don't want to put garlic in too soon because if it cooks too much, then you're going to end up with bitter garlic. And that is really gross. Don't eat bitter garlic. Although I'm sure there's some kind of recipe out there. I bet there's some kind of oriental recipe out there that has bitter garlic in it. That's just not my cup of tea. Ooh, that's a good song. I don't um uh, he gets Casey Musgraves. I could be wrong on that, but it's a country song. No, it's not her. It's somebody, it's somebody. Um somebody newer, not new new, but newer. At least newer to me. Um and she sings the song about being your own cup of tea or something. Or have it, have it however you want it. Wow, it's been a long, well, maybe it's been out longer than I thought because it hasn't played on Slacker in a while. Because even though I have it favorited on Slacker, on my country station there, it hasn't played in a while. So maybe it's been out longer than I thought. This is why I can't remember it. Anyway, basically she just says, People are going to like or dislike you, so you might as well be yourself. Very good song. Love that song. So, Slacker people, if you happen to hear this, play it more. Ooh, also like her biscuit song. That's funny. Um, that one's basically a mind your own business song. <laughs> that one's fun too. Okay, so these are cooked down enough. We're going to go ahead and put our garlic in. So this is four cloves of garlic. I love me some garlic. And we're gonna incorporate that. And garlic does not need to be salt and peppered. But, oh, oh my gosh, that smell. So good, as soon as you put garlic in there, it just, whole nother level of yum. Anyway, so we're gonna sear that for just a moment. And then we'll go to our soup stock setting. All right, that's good. We do not want bitter garlic, so we're going to cancel that out. Make sure we start it so it's not stuck to the bottom. You don't want to burn in the pot. Okay, so now we want to add two cups of almond milk. And I, oddly enough, um, the recipe I'm using calls for almond milk. I didn't actually have to change it from regular milk. So we're gonna, it, it's gonna have two cup or four cups of almond milk total, but for the moment we're gonna do two cups. And I just realized, because my oven is black, or my stove top is black, it's really hard to see the line. Gotta get real close to see that. Okay, so I wanna put two cups of almond milk in here. We'll give that a nice stir, make sure we. Well, technically what we're doing is deglazing the pan. I'm getting up all in any of those yummy goodie bits. Oh, it smells so good. So I'm betting they used almond milk because remember I said almond milk is sweeter than regular milk. So I'm betting that's why they use almond milk because this is a corn chowder and corn is also sweet. So they're just kind of running with that. So we're going to go ahead and pour two more cups of our almond milk because we know we need it later that way we can move this thing out of our way i'm just gonna put it back in the fridge because it is right behind me and you are not wrong i need a bigger kitchen and i need an island so y'all can be on the other side of me so you can see better so y'all tell my husband you can find him i don't know somewhere apparently he is on youtube too um back when he used to game a ton he made uh, videos with some of his guys. They were in this, I don't know, this elite group that made money and got free products or whatever. So he was actually really, really good. It's not that good now because he works more than he plays. But, um, yeah, so he's on there. Um, but Gamerly, though, you can find him under Titanium Nerd. That is his name. 
So, fun fact there, when I bought him a ring, because we got married when we were like 18, um, we couldn't afford anything, so we got really cheap rings. So, uh, about five, six years ago now, I went and got him a ring specially made for him, and because of his gamer tag, it's actually made partly of titanium. So, how cool is that? Plus, it says... My love, my life, my all, and then it says our wedding date, only without the year it has an infinity symbol. Because, you know, never breaking that vow. So, anyway, aren't I sweet? Anyway, so that smells really good. So, now that we have our almond milk in, we're going to put our corn and our potatoes. So, we have about four baby red potatoes, and we put it through... Our mandolin, which has teeth, we put it through the one that has teeth. So the one with teeth just makes fries, really. And since I used it on baby red tomato potatoes, we got teeny tiny little matchsticks. So we're going to put that in here. And th what that does is the starches in it. It's not as starchy as a russet potato, but the starches will help to thicken the soup and give it some more bulk. Though at the end here, we will still be putting some cornstarch in to help it thicken some more. But that will help it thicken a little bit so that we don't have to use quite as much cornstarch. All right, so now we're going to put in three bags of corn. I'll put the scissors somewhere. So I love these little bags. Normally, I actually open them, pop them in a, gr a grill basket, and I put them on the grill, but... When it's raining out, because we don't have a covered deck here. Before I had a covered porch and I cooked, I cook, I smoked and grilled year round, and I don't care what was happening out there as long as there's not a tornado. I even did it in hailstorms and heavy snow. Doesn't matter. I had a covered or a covered porch. We have a deck, but we don't have a covered deck here. So whenever it's raining, I can't do that. So more so than in Nebraska, I now use these and they just steam in the microwave. They have the instructions on the back just to microwave them and then I'll toss it usually corn since it's corn again corn reminds me of Mexican food so I usually put a lime in there with some salt and pepper and we have lime corn sometimes you know the street corn that has some mayonnaise and some seasonings and stuff on it sometimes I'll do that with some corn as well you can do that and make it into a dip by the way that's also very good Get that out of my way, and we're gonna stir in our corn. So we got three bags of corn. Stir, 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 stir. I really like frozen corn because fresh corn is really hard to come by, and when you do come by it, it's really, really expensive, especially here in Texas. Not really gonna tell you where in Texas I live. It's a huge state, um, but. It's really hard to come by. It's harder, not really hard. It's harder, so it's more expensive here than it was in Nebraska because they grow it in Nebraska a lot. And, you know, the surrounding states grow it a lot. So it was harder. It's harder to get it here. So, or, so yeah, so it costs more. I don't like the price. And I apparently can't grow it here either. I tried. I tried to grow a lot of things here. I've lived in multiple states, grown food in multiple states, and this is the only state I kill everything except fruit trees. My fruit trees are alive. But oddly enough, even though I, I'm in Texas, I cannot grow fruit trees. I was really excited about moving here because I thought, oh, fruit trees and, you know, avocado tree. Turns out, no. So, I'm about to beat my video limit size here. So I am going to put a pause on this since we haven't started cooking soup yet. And I will be right back after I upload this stuff from my phone. We are back. So 30 minutes just went off for our dough here. It is rising, so that's good. It's not risen enough, so we need to do another 30 minutes. So the bread's definitely going to get done after this. But the good thing about the soup and stock setting, or really most of these settings on here, because we've learned that we don't really care for the steaming setting, or now the proof setting, um, but it does keep warm, so it'll keep our soup warm, and since it's a soup, or chowder really, it'll keep it nice and warm for us while we wait for our bread, so that's king. 
Okay, so we put in our almond milk, corn, and potatoes. We were stirring. Now we need to make sure we've stirred enough. I'm going to put it all down. Okay, so now we need to put the lid on. And I have a lid way over here, so pardon me. So we're going to put the lid on. And make sure our thing is down because I have a habit of not doing that. Okay, so we're going to go over to our soup and stock. And it says to adjust our time to 8 minutes. So time down to 8 minutes. And we're just cooking this for 8 minutes and then we're going to add more to it. Okay, so we're going to let this go for 8 minutes. And then I will be right back to do the other half of it. All right, so our cooker is pressurized and now doing its countdown. Our bread has thankfully risen almost double, maybe double. So we're gonna save our paper towel for after we put it on our tray here. So we're just gonna set that up there. So when we take this out, this is obviously gonna have a lot of water underneath. So, we pull it out gently, and then we have a towel to clean it so that we don't drip water all over our flour here. Okay, and this is the fun part. You get to punch it. Punch it down. <laughs> so, we're just going to roll it out. See the bottom of it? It's a little on the sticky side. So, that's why we have flour down. And I'm going to put that bowl there. I'm going to take this bowl and I'm going to dump it because this water is no longer hot. So we're going to need some new super hot water. Okay, so now with our dough here. She's beautiful. She's not as warm as she should be though. So let's hope she continues to rise like she's supposed to. See, this is why I wear... Um, this. Okay, so we want to cut this into three pieces, okay? Because we're braiding, so to braid we need three pieces. Okay, so all you do is you take your dough, and you're not going to need a roller for this, it, because you are the roller. It flattened too much, see, because it didn't, didn't rise like it should have. So that's that. Next time I'll just use this thing. Anyway, so we're just going to roll it out and squish it out. Sometimes I'll find it easier to squish it. But we're going to make three long snakes. And then when you're done with that snake, you put it at the top. Then we're going to make another snake. Yeah, these are definitely squishing out better than they are rolling. Normally, if it's risen well, but we kind of killed it a little bit, and when we were trying to proof it in the container, um, it'll just roll in your hands out. But this one's not like that. So, okay, so you want them about the same size. Make sure you don't accidentally break them apart, because if you hammer them too much, they'll break in half, and then your braid won't be as pretty. It won't be ugly, because when it rises again it'll fill in all those cracks but it won't be quite as pretty <laughs> all right so those three are the same i'm going to knock off the excess flour here and set them to the side for a moment we're going to move that out of our way and here's our greased pan so what you're going to do is you're going to start it at the top and it's going to overlap. That's okay. It'll braid together. So all three of them on here. Just going to move that to the side so it doesn't nip off the counter here. And you're going to go ahead and squish the top together. Can you see that? You can see it well enough. Okay, squish the top together and then we just braid one over the other. One over the other. Just a simple braid, just like you would do your hair, 
you're not a girl, you might not braid your hair, that's okay. And so we get to the end, and yes, we overlapped, but you see how it's more stretched out up here? That's when you just put it back together. And now we are on the pan. So it'll um, go out as well as up. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do our really hot water from our sink. Then we will put the bowl down. We'll put this on top of the bowl. And then we will use our paper towels and we will proof for another hour. So I'm going to go do that. I have our braid over really hot water. It's going to proof now. Oh, I forgot to start this timer. Alexa, start a one hour timer. One hour. That. I'm trying to get the whole flour off. Anyway, okay, so our timer went off for our soup in stock settings, so we're hitting cancel. And then we got a release our steam, and we're going to double time our over the steam with our wooden spoon here. And then it comes out of two bowls and put on. Now, when you're proofing bread, if you're not using your stove top like I am for other things, your oven is going to be hot when you do the second go around. And so, because you're going to preheat your oven for your bread. And so it's actually really good to keep your bowl with your bread on top of the oven because that will give it more of a surrounding warmth. Because while it is warm underneath on the bowl, it's cold over the top of it. So it does proof better if you are able to do it on the stove. Almost there. Okay. That's good. Alright, now we're going to take the top off. Like, oh, give me the top back. Alright. Now oh, we're going to stir it up. We've got a bit of a creamy consistency going on here with our mixture. Okay. So now we're going to add our seasoning. So I have some chipotle powder. Don't use a whole lot because it is spicy unless you really like spicy. So we're going to sprinkle a little bit of that in there. Then, because, you know, we're doing Mexican flavors, so we're going to do some paprika. I like a little more paprika. So maybe like a fourth a teaspoon of the chipotle powder. Probably put about a tablespoon of paprika in there and about a tablespoon of cumin. Yeah. Into the container. Okay. So we're gonna stir in our seasonings. Duh, that's hot. I'm trying to hold the pan in place with my fenders. What an idiot. Um, you have to admit when you're being dumb sometimes. All right, we're gonna give that a good stir. It smells really good. All right, so it's not gonna be quite as yellow because we used some Mexican spices, so we got some red color up in there. But you know, there's still lots of little, we can call the corn the little sponge bobs. Lots of little sponge bobs. That's what we'll tell our boy. Okay, so then we have two more cups of almond milk that need to go in. So we're going to pour most of this in. And then we're going to leave a little bit for our cornstarch. And we're going to turn this back on to sear. Okay. And we're going to let this start boiling. Because your cornstarch is not really going to activate very well without the, the boiling process. So we're going to go ahead and let it this cook a bit until it starts boiling so that's going to take like maybe four to six minutes so we'll be back when it's boiling our pot is getting a boil going so what we're going to do is we're going to take our almond milk and we're going to take our cornstarch cornstarch and then we're just going to take about a tablespoon there you go tablespoon i'll pop that in our milk and don't put it directly in the pot. It will never, it will never, ever dissolve. Then you'll have chunks of powder or cornstarch. Gross. So this is, we're actually dissolving this in milk. But normally one dissolves it in water. 
And so how you know you get the right consistency when you're doing it in water, because you can't really see the milk, is to get the milk color. So when your water turns a milky color, you know that it's the right consistency. But we're putting it in milk, so that's a little bit harder to know. But I do know that I won't need a lot, especially since we're going to leave it um, on a warm, slow cook setting while we wait for our bread to finish rising and then bake. So, I also really can't see through it very well because it's milk, so I'm hoping that it's completely dissolved. It probably is. So then we just pour that in there, and it will thicken. This cornstarch thickens. Give it a good stir. And even though we're going to let this sit in here for like an hour or so, so I'll probably put it on a slow cook setting, but even though we're going to let it sit here for an hour or so, that's not really a bad thing. It is a soup. It's okay for it to cook down more and thicken and get more creamy. We're good with that. It's yummy. So that's all that's going to happen with this. So we're going to go ahead and turn off our steam. Okay. We've got that incorporated really well. So now we're going to put our lid back on. There we go. I'm going to push her back here. And then we're going to go to the slow cook setting. And it says four hours. I don't really care how long it says. We're going to go ahead and push start. Because what we're doing is just keeping it warm until our bread is done. So now we're going to move our bread. Because remember I said the stove and stuff and this is warm so that will help the bread rise even better so we're actually going to move the bread from over there to over here and then we'll let it finish rising so we'll see you back when it's done rising so I can show it to you before I cook it and then we'll show it to you again after I cook it and then we'll see how beautifully this cooked down because I like more thickness to my soup so this is something I probably would have done anyway but you can leave it as a thinner soup as well have been doing our second rice for an hour now, so that's two hours, and look at her! I actually don't mind the lines through here, I think it's really pretty, the braid. Okay, so now that we don't need our paper towel anymore, what we're going to do is, as I slide this off of the bowl, I'm going to slide it across the paper towel to dry off the bottom side, because it was sitting on water. Okay, look at that. And there's our French braid. How pretty is that? So now we have our oven preheated to 375, and we are going to cook it for about 20 to 25 minutes. So we will set our timer for starting with 20 minutes. Okay, and then while we are here, we're going to check out our... A lot of water on top of there. Oh look, I have a water bowl sitting right here. How convenient was that? We're gonna give our chowder a good stir. It smells really good. You can stick some tortillas in here, some tortilla strips, and you can have a, a tor corn tortilla. It's going to continue doing its thing while the bread cooks. So our food is done now. Our bread cooked for 20 minutes and now it's nice. Whoops, upside down. It's nice and golden. See, our beautiful French bread right there. And look at that. It didn't stick to the pan at all. Okay, so now after that is done, take some butter. I've got a, a tablespoon of butter here left from other recipes and you just rub it on there so we're going to rub some butter on there get it nice and yummy and you can either put seasonings on top of the bread before you bake it if you do that you need to use like a spray butter 
otherwise you'll be wiping all the seasonings off. Or you can rub it down with butter after it's cooked and season the top or not season at all. You don't have to season it. But if you do want seasonings, you can do that. So like if you put like sesame seeds on the top, it, that's definitely better to do before it bakes. So it sticks better while it's baking. <coughs> Rub it really well with butter. That's what you would do this when you make rolls, croissants. You always butter everything. In fact, my actual croissant recipe, I, you, it calls to dip it in, in melted butter and then roll it. So it's very, very buttery and decadent. There we go, we got it all buttered up and looking nice and beautiful. Make sure we get in all those nooks and crannies we ended up with. Now when it works properly and you didn't like ruin it the first time by not proofing it correctly <laughs> like I did, it'll actually be smooth instead of half these lines, but the lines are beautiful too, so I like them. I'm going to clean my fingers because they are all greasy from the butter. And we will just transfer our bread to our beautiful serving tray here. I love these. These are they're stoneware, they are coated stoneware, and it'll just slide right on there. I'll have to put it at an angle for it to fit on this. This is their large serving platter. How beautiful does that look? So our SpongeBob birthday inspired dinner is finally done. And so we're just gonna pour our corn chowder with our little thumb bumps into our serving tray and we're gonna pour away from ourselves and pour it on top of a spoon also helps it to not splatter quite as much. Get all that goodness up in there. Yum yum yum. And when we go to serve this just spoon it into a bowl and we will top it with our sliced up green onions and even some shishito peppers since I know those aren't really I don't think they're a Mexican pepper anyway I love them so we're gonna put them on there so here is our corn chowder and that look yummy I think it looks yummy now, if you do a regular corn chowder and you don't put the Mexican spices in there, it'll look more yellow. It looks it looks more red because of our paprika and stuff. 